okay. Got the batter boards up. Did the strings for the outside dimensions of the foundation. Kind of wish I'd remembered that, which we'll talk about in a minute. And yeah, that's the view from the car, so I'll walk up, keeping it perfectly steady. Okay, uh, with Jerry and Phillip's help, we laid out the camp and the porch. This is the porch. I can't quite, with uh, four holes for each, for each sonotube, 16 inch sonotubes, that'll hold up the front of the porch. This is the front line of the camp itself, and uh, this is going to be a 24 inch footer and 8 inch wall for the camp. Walking towards the road a little more, this is the center line of the uh, camp. And there's four sonotubes with, I beg your pardon, three 24 inch sonotubes with four holes each, four rebars each. I ran out of re this rebar is just to mark the holes actually. Um, and I didn't have enough rebar to mark all the holes going down to this far corner. It, uh, I added some extra holes because I wasn't quite sure about the grade. So I added a series of extra holes along this back, back side, up to this corner. This uh, green string is, yellow string, whatever it is, is the height of the foundation. So the finished floor is about a foot above that roughly. You can see I've got it pretty much as low as it can be. Um, but it's still pretty high in the back in these back corners. I'll try to put access panels on both back corners um, and take the sewer out this side and bring the water in and uh, this other side will just be a tiny bit of storage not much. I've got some big interesting rocks that I'd like to get out before they finish the uh, foundation but I can't do much more than wiggle them they're too heavy um, and there's actually a couple rocks here that still need to be pulled out I just ran out of steam I tried to break this rock up because it was moving and pull it out and I used feathers and shims I drilled holes you can which you can see there and used uh, feathers and shims to break the rock. That's a lot harder than it is in the book. And you can see I had to drill those holes about two inches on center or else it just broke, even then actually, it broke very unpredictably all different directions. Um, I don't exactly know why. I shouldn't say all different directions, but an, it would, there would be an alternate direction frequently that it would, that it would shatter in. So, um, I think it would have been almost impossible to chisel this thing flat, because it just goes in all different directions. Maybe if you had a sculptor. On Friday I met with a power company planner, National Grid, a woman named Carol, and they're going to put a, a power pole down there, which means this big, big white pine is going to have to be taken out what she said and I believe her um, over there's a guy wire for it and uh, from there the power will come to the back of the building sort of over towards this corner one mistake we made was centering these pins on the yellow line and this is the outside of the foundation wall which means it's not centered on the footing it's pushed towards the outside. 
So I got to talk to, I'm going to see if I can get Joe Dolan to do the foundation. Otherwise I got to drill more holes, which I do not wish to do. That took, takes about, once you get good at it, it takes about five minutes a hole. But it's tiring. And there's roughly 80 holes. So, and you got to measure. Next time maybe I'll measure it right, but anyway.